IFR is some of the most challenging and fun types of flying we can do. Knowing your avionics can make the difference between a memorable flight and one we hope to never have again. Well, thanks for clicking on the video. If you're here, you probably have a GTN 650, 750, and you're looking to learn a little bit more about it, or maybe you're about to fly a plane, or maybe you've got a plane that you've been flying for a while that has one, and you just want to learn a little bit more. I'm Dennis Mayhem, flight instructor, CSIP, and I'm here to make you a better pilot. There's going to be a whole series of videos. I'll create a whole playlist. If you go through the channel, click on playlist, there'll be a whole list of everything I've got on the GTN 650s, 750s, how they work, tips and tricks, little gotchas and things to watch out for. Um, here we have a video of an IFR flight that's going to hopefully shed a lot of light on normal operations and how we hope to use this. We got ourselves a big one today. This is going to be a whole lot of fun. We're going to look at one of the most complex systems of airspace in the world. We're going to fly it and we're going to make it easy. So we're going to do a departure from Peterborough to Pittsburgh. We're going to do a departure procedure. We're going to activate legs. We're going to fly airways, do a departure or an arrival, ILS, missed approach. We're going to throw it all at you. And seriously, this is going to be easy. So our clearance is going to read something like clear to Pitts, uh, Teterboro 2 departure, vectors to Sparta 252, hint, that's uh, Victor 39, with the Elliott transition, then the Vectors 39 Delvro with the Demi for arrival, Vince transition. Uh, this is all going to be done at 14,000 feet, and it's going to be a whole lot of fun. So here we are, flight plan page on the 750, and we need to build this flight. So again, we're looking for ways to reduce the amount of button pushing we need to do. So the first thing I'm going to do, so I'm going to actually load our departure procedure out of here and let's see what we can find and can we save ourselves any button pushings by doing this. We know we want the Teterboro 2 departure, runway 24, transition not available. So unfortunately we're not going to be able to save too much button pushing by doing this. But you know what, that's perfectly fine. So next thing we need to do is load our airway that's going to give us uh, Victor 39. This is all going to start at the Sparta VOR. That's S A X to Sparta. That's what we're looking for. So we will click on here and we are going to load our airway. And we know that this is Victor 39. So come down here. And we know we're going to exit this at Delbro. And we're actually going to enter it somewhere before Elliot, but that's not what we're looking for quite yet. We want the exit. So we're going to exit at Elliot, although we're not even entering at Saks, we just have to have it in here. So we're going to load this. We're going to add another waypoint, and this time I can't really load the arrival for Pittsburgh. I can't load an approach without putting Pittsburgh in. So K P I T Pittsburgh in with the fast find. And we want to load a procedure. We're going to start with the arrival. And this will be the Demi 3. It's now the Demi 4, but this is an old database. Vince transition. We're landing runway 32. The map shows something I'm pretty happy with, so let's take that. And the last thing we're going to do is load a procedure, an approach, ILS 32. We'll load that. Now, here's a little pro tip. While you're sitting on the ground, possibly you got the engine running, this is a lot of stuff to go enter. Uh, I usually probably wouldn't enter my arrival, and I almost certainly wouldn't enter my approach sitting on the ground because I know we've got hundreds of miles to cover. I'm going to be bored. I'm going to be looking for something to do. So a lot of times I'd like to enter those in once we get up to altitude. And you never know. Maybe the weather's going to change at Pittsburgh and we're not actually going to land this runway or maybe the traffic's not going to allow this approach or the uh, arrival. So don't get too hung up on doing all this stuff ahead of time, but you definitely want to plug in the first couple hundred miles before we depart. So all this looks good. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's take a look at a map. Now we're going to see a couple new things we maybe haven't seen before. We don't have a magenta line leading to this 1500 foot waypoint. And we see down here we got our uh, 1500 feet as our next waypoint. That's kind of odd. That's not something we normally see. And we have a white dash line taking us to 4.5 TEB and continuing on to show some vectors. Again, that's not what we normally see, but there's a very good reason for this. 
we go back in our flight plan and we cross-reference this with our departure procedure, it begins to make a lot of sense. So we're going from runway 24. We're going to fly a heading of 240 to 1500 feet. Once we hit 1500 feet, we're then going to turn right heading 280, continue that heading to 4.5 DME from the Teterboro VOR. At that point, we're going to climb to 2000 feet and we'll be looking for vectors to that uh, Sparta 252 radial. From there, we're just going to sequence our airways or sequence our waypoints through this airway and we'll work our way into the arrival. So how do we fly this? It's not really that difficult. We got to look at the autopilot setup now that we have the navigation side set up pretty well. So again, we're going to assume STEC 55. The way I would do this is I would set myself uh, obviously, I'm going to take off the autopilot off, but at a safe altitude when the autopilot comes on, I'm going to be looking for a nav GPSS, so two button pushes on nav, out vertical speed to climb to 1500 feet. So we make sure that heading or altitude bug is set for 1500. So we will, in fact, stop at 1500 feet. So let's go ahead and start the sim here. We're going to set us into track mode. That's essentially a GPS steer on the autopilot. We're going to set an airspeed of, let's climb at 120. So you'll notice this 1500 foot thing that looks like a waypoint. It's not actually a waypoint, but it kind of looks like one. As we get closer to it, it's going to continue to push out farther and further. I'm going to set my altitude to 1,400 feet, so we're not going to meet the criteria to sequence past this point yet. I just want to show you how it's going to behave. So there we go. As we get closer, we have not met 1,500 feet yet, so it's not going to sequence us on to the next waypoint. If I bring my altitude up to 1,500, we're going to see, okay, now we've met 1,500 feet. We can turn right to that heading 280. So it has us flying heading 280 for another five seconds or so. And once we hit 4.5 DME from the Teterboro VOR, we're going to climb to 2,000 feet. And now we are expecting vectors. All right, so ATC calls us up. It says turn right heading 290 to intercept the Sparta 252 radial. That sounds like a handful, but it's really not that bad. So we set our heading bug to 290 and we change ourselves to heading mode. And now we need to activate a leg. So we'll go back into our flight plan. And our next point we're gonna to go to is not Sparta, it is Elliot. So we go Elliot, activate leg. Do we wanna activate the leg between Sparta and Elliot? The answer is yes. So now we see we have connected those two points. We'll go back to a map and see what that looks like. So now we continue this heading until we intercept that course. Now on the autopilot, this is very simple. All we have to do is heading and nav at the same time. So two finger button push. And once we intercept that nav course, the autopilot will turn us to continuous on that track. And here we go. It looks like our nav course is starting to show up on our CDI. So as that comes in, assuming we had set the autopilot correct on both heading and nav mode, we should start to turn. From here, we're just going to sequence waypoints as we normally would up until the point where we get into the approach portion of this flight. So here we are, we just crossed Vince on the Demi 4 arrival, and we got a scenario where ATC just called us and gave us something that can be kind of complicated at some times, but we're going to make this really simple. They want us to cross five miles prior to please and to maintain 5,000 feet with pot's discretion on that descent. So this is really simple to do if we don't get overwhelmed with the amount of stuff going on. So five miles before we cross please, we want to be at 5,000 feet. How do we do that? Well, it's incredibly simple. So we go back to our flight plan. We click on please and we want a long track. So five miles before, uh, if it was an after call, we could go after, that's fine. 
We'll keep that before enter. So five miles before please, we want to be at 5,000 feet. And we'll save that. So our next step is to look at our vertical profile on this. So so we'll go into Utilities, VNAV, and to do a three degree flight path angle, we need a thousand feet per minute down. I probably don't want that, and you probably don't want that either. So we're gonna change this to 1.7. 541 feet per minute, that's pretty nice, especially with a pilot's discretion descent. We can just take our time with this. Our top of descent will be in 12 minutes. So we'll click back, back, map, and we can see we have a top of descent a few miles before a jossie. We're all set there. Uh, we could kind of watch and watch for our countdown to tell us when to start our descent. Set our altitude bug down to 5,000 feet. Vertical speed, I'm going to guess probably about 600 feet. It's going to be about what we want. And then we'll modify that as we need it on our descent to make sure we cross that point five miles prior to please at exactly 5,000 feet. We'll make this really clean and look like we really know what we're doing. Here we are coming up on our bottom of descent. We're leveling out at 5,000 feet and ATC, because they're so nice to us today, decides to throw yet another curveball at us and they want us to hold at please as published. This is really simple to deal with. So we click to come back to our flight plan. We're going to click on please and we want to hold a waypoint. At this point, we need to make sure that this matches everything we have on our, our arrival procedure. It looks like we need a hold that is not based on time, but based on mileage. So we're gonna change this to distance. This is a 10 mile hold. Enter, load hold, and there we go. We now have a hold loaded in. Now the question is, what's going to happen? Are we going to continue on straight or are we going to enter the hold? What is this system going to do? Now our answer is really simple. If we look down at our CDI bar, it is showing that our we are coming from please minus five to please and our next step will be the hold with a 10 mile hold. So we know exactly what's going to happen and we're, we're flashing hold direct. So this should enter the hold and we shouldn't expect any surprises here. So here we are back inbound and ATC calls and tells us we're good to continue on and exit the hold. So all we have to do to now sequence on to Nesto rather than stay in the hold is unsuspend. So we have a button for that down here. We click unsuspend. The hold goes away. If they were to call back and change their mind on us, no big deal. We click suspend again, and we can toggle this as many times as we want. So now we're back out of suspend mode. We're in unsuspend, and we'll sequence on through all of our waypoints just as we normally would. So we're getting pretty close. We're going to assume we've already briefed our approach. We've done all that good stuff. Um, there's one thing that I like to do. So as I'm briefing my approach, the first thing I want to do is load it and then brief it, just to kind of... Make sure that everything that got loaded matches what I expect it to do. When I get to the point that talks about frequencies, I'm going to notice, or should notice, that my ILS frequency has been placed in the standby. Once I verify that, I bring that up to my active. Now it's important that you manually put that up to active every single time. So we have another problem, or potential problem, or thing to be aware of here. As we look at our flight plan, we're going to sequence through our arrival, which ends at Grunz with vectors. And then we pick up our approach, which begins at Grunz. Now notice that these two are not connected. What that tells us is that the automatic sequencing is not going to take us from Demi to Grunz and then automatically bring us down here into the approach. We're going to have to do something about that. Okay, so here's our scenario. ATC calls us up. It says fly current heading to intercept, descend, maintain at 4,000 feet. So what we have to do is go back in and we need to proceed to our approach. So we can click our approach. We have vectors to final. So we fly current heading, direct to Grunz. 
and we have activated the approach. So now we're going to sequence our waypoints within our approach. Notice that our nav source select has changed from GPS to VLO. Now this happens automatically under certain criteria, but we need to verify that that actually did take place. There are plenty of times where it won't automatically sequence on, so we just need to verify that we got the VLOC display both on the GPS and your PFD. So here we are at our intermediate fix of Weiler. Just prior to our final approach fix, ATC calls us up and gives us those magic words, cleared for the approach. Now that's your cue to reach down to the autopilot and press the approach mode. Now I know there are certain times where some autopilots will automatically sequence on to the approach mode. Personally, I don't like doing that or relying on that because there are certain criteria that must be met. And it's possible to have a stabilized approach outside those criteria, especially if you're just outside of them. And you may not even recognize that you were outside of those criteria and the autopilot will not fly the descent. So here we are half a mile away from our missed approach point and we're gonna go ahead and do a missed approach so we can look at what that involves. So when we get here, our missed approach procedure is going to be climb straight ahead to 1,800 feet, followed by a right-hand turn climbing to 4,000 to the Echo Whiskey Charlie VOR. So we had a missed approach point. We can either remain suspended. And this is what you would do if ATC assigned you some other non-published missed. Or in our case, we're going to activate the GPS missed approach. We're going to go back to nav mode or GPSS mode on the autopilot. And take a look at this. This should look familiar. So this 1800, that is the exact same indications we had departing Teterboro. So once we cross 1800 feet, and bring her out to 1700, and notice how 18 just keeps getting pushed in front of us and in front of us and in front of us. Once I climb to 1800 feet, it's going to recognize that we have met that criteria. So here we go. We are above 1800 feet. And because we've met that, it will sequence on. We'll climb up to 4,000 feet. You can see from here, it's navigating us to the Elwood City VOR, where it looks like we'll be holding on a 002 radial. And this hold will be flown exactly as the hold we saw on that arrival. So we'll be able to enter it. Uh, looks like as we zoom in, it's going to give us a teardrop entry. We can see we're going to fly outbound turn back in with the teardrop portion and we'll stay in that hold. We'll have a suspend button to click once we went out of it. And at this point, your next steps are kind of up to you as far as what you want to do. You know, whether that's go find VFR or better conditions, maybe VFR conditions, go back into this airport, try it again, talk to ATC. I, I don't know what decision you're going to make, but you'll use these similar processes for whatever your next step might happen to be.